It's Sports Bazaar. There's a lot to like in this story. It's getting more ridiculous as it goes on. The hunt for the weirdest. What are you talking about? Are you serious? What? So many questions. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you here. <laughs> strangers. Unflattering, but essentially accurate. I'm quite <laughs> exhausted. It's going to get stranger and stranger. Most unbelievable. If you wrote this as a movie, people wouldn't believe it. Stories to ever occur. An epic tale of woe, joy, nutty behaviour. The fact that it's not more well known is just the strangest. Thing. In the world of sport. This is going to get juicy here, isn't it? We, we should open a window or something. <laughs> Sports Bazaar. How many testicles did he have? Eight. <laughs> I'm running naked down a major street in Chicago. <laughs> this, of course, is the last time organised crime and boxing has crossed over. Got up in a press conference. We're here to announce we've swapped our wives. What is going on? It's time for the leaders of the hunt. Got household names for me. But... Surely a red flag. It's Titus O'Reilly. And Mick Malloy. Welcome back to Sports Bazaar. What have you got for us today, Titus? Where are we going? Where in the world? And what sport? This will be released while the Tour de France is on. So, uh, of course, one of the uh, brilliant, greatest sporting events. It's in huge, the world, isn't it? really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't get it as much in Australia, but in Europe and uh, around the world, this is big yeah, time. I mean, and after you know. You've got Lance Armstrong. You've got, you know, it's, Good Lord. it's truly international now, though. <laughs> like the one thing he did do is make everyone know what the Tour de France he sure is. Did. Um, He's been great for it. The, the famous yellow uh, jersey. Yeah. It's, uh, do you watch it? Do you? So I do. So I love watching sport overnight. And one of the great things about being in Australia is a lot of the great sporting encounters happen between one and four in the morning. Yeah, which so is your natural hours. My natural, my natural habitat is the couch <laughs> in nocturnal hours. But I love it. I love To me, uh, the greatest sight in sport is the peloton going down. Yeah. I just... In, it, it is oh, you just, mean not downhill, like as in, no, as yeah, in crashing? When the peloton goes down, it's like just... Like when the lady held the sign across when, the... When the lady, <laughs> and this is what it gets it. They've got a million ways to take the peloton down. It's yeah, usually yeah. a lady with a sign... Or a Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> One dog. Here's, here's a tip. If you're going to the Tour de France, yeah. put your dog on a leash yeah. because that is enough. But don't you think like, that lady that held the sign, people don't remember, she held the sign oh to the camera but she had her back, to, back the, to, to where the peloton were coming Yes, and they ran in her and they all fell over. So if anyone yeah. hasn't seen that, it's on YouTube and everything. Yeah. Her whole aim was for people to see that sign. It's, I think it said happy birthday grandpa or something, right? <laughs> She couldn't have got more people exactly. to see that sign if she hadn't taken out the Did entire... Did she get hate mail? I she think got, she, well, she was she, almost arrested, I, I think. I think she had to like go into some kind of witness protection oh, yeah. scheme. The, the thing I think about the Tour de France that is the, the thing that people who haven't followed it intimately from the beginning mm. or know its history, or, there's sort of this sense that it's always been a bit dodgy and then Lance Armstrong came out and wow. made it massively dodgy. <laughs> confirmed right. it. Well, confirmed it, but there's also this view that he was sort of this you know, next level anomaly that came along. When yeah. really, the more you understand the history of the Tour de France, the more yeah. you realise he is a continuation, not anything new That's right. at all. The, right? the, he the is, latest in a long line. He, he, yeah, he is the latest in a long line. So I thought what we'd do is, since the Tour de France is currently on... They have, like, grid girls too, sorry. It's just, but it's like, if, we're not allowed to have them in, you know, motorsports and all this stuff, but there's yeah. always hotties. But it's on France. The podium it's France. With, when, when someone's got the yeah. yellow jacket on, uh, they crack open the magnums. But it's France. The, they haven't had a president who hasn't had a public affair in <laughs> like since the war finished. Like, and why is it so big in care. France? Why? What's their connection to cycling? Well, or it, to, it always, you know, cycling was always big in France from very early on. I mean, you know, a lot of these European countries, you know, America sort of. The bike being invented, mate, people could travel. Mm. Like, because horses were expensive. Yeah. And then cars took off in America pretty quickly, but a bit slower in some parts of Europe. So the bike really became a big thing. And then right. the cycling was big from early on. So right. so what I thought we'd do is to, to put, given that Tour de France is on, give to really understand the Tour de sure. France. I, well, I, I think... I think there's two episodes for us to do here. Okay. The Far first away. that we're going to, today we're going to do is the beginnings of the Tour de France. Because if you understand the beginnings of the Tour de France, it all makes sense. Wow. How lo- what, what are we talking? Thing. What time? Well, we'll go and, and then are I we think, talking I think, penny farthings? <laughs> was the first Tour de France on penny farthings? <laughs> you could write a penny farthing or a unicycle. 
Walt <laughs> Juggling. No, no, that was normal bike. A unicycle. What, no. about a, what about a goodies, one of those goodies <laughs> style bikes? See, that, the tandem a, free, you'd watch that, wouldn't I you? I would definitely watch that. Put the oh, whole yeah. team on the one bike. I like the watching the ones where the, it's an adult and a kid and the kid halfway <laughs> in just starts phoning it in. <laughs> so what about you just a really on the bike? Why don't you make them deliver papers or something while they're doing it? You just oh, sort of some Uber Eats. Them. I don't know. Just well, I think Uber Eats is how they train now. <laughs> I think you know it's a matter. Of, it's, yeah, an really Uber fit. Eats it, team in the Tour de France. Wouldn't that be great? It's about time. Yeah, you got to stop off deliver and still take the podium. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> well, so if we so and I think the second episode we need to talk about. So we won't talk about this today that much. But I think the second one we need to do is cover doping, doping, because that is its own. Episode. We're not. If we they've stamped tri- it out now, haven't they? It's the cleanest sport. <laughs> but we we'll, we'll cover. Right, we'll get into we're, that. We're foreshadowed, but we'll even cover why there is so much doping. Did you ever take up trip. cycling yourself? Did you? I ever? thought you were going to say I've ever take up doping <laughs> to get through some of these episodes. I'm I off am, my chops <laughs> right now, to be honest. <laughs> um, um, no, I, I've I've read. Oh, I grew up riding bikes, you know, because yeah. my day was BMXs, though, right? Yeah, like, that yeah. was like you know, if so, I was in the Tour de France, I'd be a climber. <laughs> I, I would excel in the Pyrenees. Oh, you yeah, know, when we get to the real yeah, yeah, steep yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you've got powerful thighs. I've always said that about and my, you. And my bike would be to go from side to side. <laughs> you know that move? Um, yeah, no, I'm looking for We should address the take their tops off? Why do they take their tops off? They, they always get, unzip their... They get hot. Oh, boo-hoo. Yeah, well, we'll get yeah, to one. No. So, the, well, the first Tour of France didn't have heels. So to get, so let's go back to the first one, like, you know, really show that... Didn't someone have a motor? Did someone have a motor? Later on there has been talk of there have been little motors put in the stem of the bike, the seat stem, you know, yeah. but there's there's some doubts of whether that's actually 100% true. And what's the deal with support? Sorry for answering dopey questions, but I don't know much about it. Doping like, questions what, that, or doping? Dopey. Like, you can, how can you can rest on a car which is going 30 k's and you can just... We're well, not Pitch really. Like, someone, someone like in the uh, Italian uh, tour recently, they were resting on a car for a few seconds and got disqualified. So you're actually not allowed to. Mm. Now, in fact, you're not allowed to. You'll be super shock, shock, horror. You'll learn that the fact that it's against the rules doesn't always stop people from doing what they're doing. So let's go back to 1903. So this is the so first ever Tour de France. 1903. This is when it started. And what happened? Just a bunch of well, guys sitting around decide. No, so it's got a bit of time on their hands. This is to bike. understand the Tour de France. This is will make all the sense in the world to okay. you. Think of the Tour de France of how it started. It started as a marketing exercise for a magazine. If you understand, right. it's a marketing exercise from the beginning, with pure commercial outcomes right. and. You know, and just caring about how it looks, yes, not what actually happens. You'll understand everything that happens. It's kind of like how Red Bull sponsor yeah, events, yeah, or, the, yeah, uh, they, like yeah. Then you know they have their the air races yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. This was solid to promote a brand. Yeah, so there's a newspaper called Le, uh, Le Auto. So it's French cycling um, newspaper, mm. a, a magazine newspaper. It was a newspaper at the time, and its numbers are plummeting in circulation in okay. know, before 903. It's it's struggling. And it's losing against its competitor, which is Le Velo, which is the number one cycling newspaper. And so, and why? It is, why is it better? It's it's just the other one is older, more established. Le Velo is the premier ba- brand, and the it's young, it's hot, Auto, it's sexy. It, you know, it's it's been around. Le Auto's the um, up and comer, but is having real trouble getting any traction in the market. Uh. So, and they're locked in a bit of battle. So the Law Auto editor, um, Henri de Grange, yep. he is it's the head of the NRA. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, that guy? No. All right. He he is pitched an idea by one of his employees, Gio Lefevor, who is says, Why don't we, to boost our circulation, host a cycling race around France? Right. And it's the first major properly organized Cycling will cover it, will promote it, we'll have the best riders, it'll be ours. There, is, there are professional there are cyclists. There are professional cyclists, but this is the first like true Tour de France. This is yeah. the tour that takes in not just local, regional races. This is we're going for it. Let's do this long term. You know, it runs about three weeks now, you know, so let's really do it properly. So it's nine and pro- three, what are they wearing? Are they oh, lycra hasn't the been bikes invented have yet. No gears and they're heavy. <laughs> you gotta remember this, right? They're yeah. wearing like pants and berets, pants. right? Yeah, and then worse than this, we'll get like like clips on their pants. I don't so know. That when you see pictures of them, and Mush can show some of this, you know, on, yeah. on our various social channels and stuff. They they're wearing berets. They're wearing like no handkerchiefs. No, no helmets. There's no safety gear. They don't have gears. The brakes barely work. Like 
the, this is. We'll get into <laughs> the how. The brakes yeah, the barely brakes, work. Yeah, they really don't. So, Jesus. so they begin planning this, these guys, and it's purely to promote the magazine. There's okay. no sense of this being anything but a. 1903, they have marketing. a meeting. They go, let's put on a let's show. Do it. Yeah. Off and, we go. And, and this will boost our circulation. So they have a six stage race, they decide, and it's going to go from. Paris, it's going to go through Lyon, Marseille, Toulouse, Bordeaux and Nantes and then return and finish back in Paris. And it's okay. a vo- there's no hills in this one, no mountains. The so famous famous mountains come much later, we'll oh, get into that, but they come later. Uh, but does it resemble the kind of Tour de France yeah, it's we It's, the, it's, the, it's the official first Tour de France. So yeah. It's called the Tour de France, it's continued from then on. Later on, hills stages are added, mountain stages are added. So, but it is the very first official one, wow. right? Okay. So, and it's each stage is four hundred kilometers long. So, this is a really long one. They have no gears. These bikes, they're much heavy. There's no ultralight flat frames or something. They're just sure. so it's brutal riding, even though it doesn't have hills in it. And um, it just makes it like they have to do. There's no teams and there's no support staff. So riders have to do these. You know. Seven stages, yep. four hundred closer. If if your bike is damaged, you have to do the repairs yourself. You're not allowed anyone helping you. <laughs> You'll take a puncture kit. Yeah, they with literally you. have puncture oh, yeah. kits with wow. them and everything. So it's all. But there's a lot of optimism because this is like an exciting thing. All the cyclists are excited about this. It's a chance to show off France. You know, it's a show okay. the cycling and everything, and all the top riders sign on. Was it a hit straight away? Well, yeah, it was very like lots of interest, and all the top riders come on board, which is the real marketing genius. Just right? from they, France or around the world at this stage? Mainly France, but yeah. there's a few that come from overseas too. So you've got a lot, bunch of people, but a lot of the top riders are French, so it's yeah. it's huge from the get go. And one of the guys who's the favourite to win, and is seen as the he's the biggest star in France at the time and he, he decides to sign yeah. on. The minute he signs on to the Tour de France, it's away. It's away. Everyone's in it. And his name is Maurice Garin. Maurice Francois Garin. Yep. Now he makes Lance Armstrong look like a choir boy. What do you mean? We'll get into this, but this is like this is What the, is he up to? So Maurice Garin's born in eighteen seventy one <sighs> in northwest Italy. So just right near the French border. Yep. But he considers himself so even though he's born in Italy, he considers himself French because it's the French speaking area. And later Why on Why would he, you do that? The Italians are loved. Well, the borders in it, the borders put, in Italy are a bit vague at it. this point in time. You got to remember, Italy is like a young country. Yeah, so, okay. so yeah. he's he's a French speaking, even though he's on the other side. Boy, he's French speaking, and he decides of, he thinks of himself as French as all the people from that region does. He becomes naturalised as a French citizen later on. But life's pretty tough. He's one of nine children, and they're dirt poor. They have no money okay. whatsoever, and he's tiny. He's a very small boy and grows up to be quite a short guy um they eventually move to france when he's 15 um he moves there not with the family by himself um because there's plenty of work for chimney sweeps and he's tiny okay what so putting 15 year olds to work they're like well you're small you could uh, be small a chimney sweep an actual thing it's it's just not uh, it's not a charles dickens or a (laughs) it's not just dick van jesus In fact, I think we should bring them back because there's a lot of kids that have got loose loose time, you know. Get them off the iPad. Here's my get card. Get them down the chimney. Here's my card. If you need your chimney swept, I'm no, your but man. To, so in northern France, there's heaps of work for chimney sweeps and he's small. <laughs> and his family agreed to have him smuggle across the border. How many chimneys could you do in a day? Like would you... Oh, was I it a season? I don't, oh, well, was, you got to remember, like I, don't, I don't think there was exactly child endangerment laws then, so they, they kind of work... <laughs> All the time. But and do you th- do it from the top down or do you start at the bottom? In terms of cleaning them. Cleaning a chimney. You're going to be shocked. I've never cleaned a chimney <laughs> in my life. Do you give them a quote or I, is it no, all the I, same? Like I'll you're going my, around. I'll ask the kids when I get home because I just send them up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're small. Um, but it would cost more if there was three chimneys in a house. That would be a big job. You, well, is it per alley or per, per chimney? Well, that's my question to yeah, you. It's a good. I, I is there a re- season? Can I is, there, say, is there like a peak season? I've researched the Tour de France, not chimney sweep. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you right up front. So, but you've got just to imagine him coming home at the end of the day with soot on your face. Hi, honey. <laughs> Well, he's only, he doesn't have a honey, he's 15. And listen to this, his family agreed to have him smuggled across the border to go become a chimney sweep. He wasn't legally allowed to do it. So it, was a, it was a coveted position. Yeah, well, it was, they, it was what like they a would professional, do is like there was a such doctor, a desperate uh, need for chimney sweeps that... 
people would smuggle them across the border from Italy, these kids, and he's and in return his family for agreeing to let him go with these people who ran the chimney sweep business, you know, like they gave them a wheel of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the most French thing ever. Yeah, they gave him a wheel of cheese and yeah. said, "If you send give your boy, give you, me a kid. Yeah, oh, he's got to clean our chimneys. Us, what does he want? Give him a wheel of cheese. If you give us your kid to come and clean chimneys, says, we'll give you a wheel of cheese." And his family said, "Absolutely." And so he's off with these guys he doesn't know to go smuggled across the border, and he's in France cleaning can, chimneys. So can I tell 15. you this? I saw a fight in France over cheese. Uh, that sounds like I'm making that up. It's the most French fight ever. Yeah, who was at breakfast? And it was over a Roquefort. It's an unpasteurised cheese, yeah, yeah. but much loved by the French. And some guy cut it wrong. So, it's, <laughs> so I swear this is true. So he's got a cheese and he's cut the middle out. So I think you're supposed to like piece of pie, take it like a piece Do of it pie. Like that. He's just whopped into it and take the middle. A guy has reached across the table and cold cocked him, punched him to the ground, and. The prevailing crowd said it was deserved. Yeah, yeah. Like they weren't angry at the no guy. Ju- no it jury was- in France. <laughs> Every jury's like, man. You know, it's like two seconds in. They're like, they really like the not cheese. Guilty. Uh, well, that yeah. See, so the wheel of cheese makes sense. Smuggle a chimney sweep across the border and give him some cheese. They go the family, but I love the family. Go, they go. Can we take your fifteen-year-old son away? Smuggle him into another country to clean chimneys. And they go. What do we get for it? Wheel of cheese. cheese done. Point, yeah. Done. All right, go on. Well, so who is he? He's so he's suddenly in France. He's, he's fifteen. He suddenly is on t- after doing chimney sweep. He starts working in factories too. And what happens while he's doing this is mm. he starts running errands on a bicycle. So this okay. is his first introduction to being on, on his a way bike. to a chimney sweep. <laughs> on the way to, so he suddenly and he suddenly realised he loved riding the bicycle and he was quite good at it. And so he suddenly started riding in regular amateur races and doing quite well. And then eventually he decides, well, I'm going to enter this race. It's not too far from where he's living in France at this point, right? Does he ride there? <laughs> we would. They all like. So he gets there and he discovers that the race is only for professionals. And he's not a professional. He hasn't turned professional or anything. And they say he tries to talk his way into competing. He's saying, "Can I?" Do you like, tell him he's a chimney sweep? <laughs> I'm quite proficient. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I got connect. I can probably get you a wheel of cheese if you let me ride in this. So they so, say, "No, you can't. It's for professionals. You're not recognised as a professional. You're an amateur. You can't do it." Um, and he gets annoyed. So rather than heading home, he decides he comes up with this plan. So as the race starts, he waits a moment. The professionals all head off. Mm. He just sprints past the officials on his bike and joins the race. He's just he's gone rogue. Yeah, he just goes, I'm joining the race. Off. Yeah, I'm just joining You're the race. Him. He's given the professionals a head start. But he takes off. The officials are yelling, stop, stop. He keeps going. He gets this, <laughs> he gave it this enormous head start, right? Despite this, he overtakes all the professionals and wins the race. And the crowd are just have gone bonkers. Bonkers. He's, it's like a, he's genuinely a superstar. And How have the professionals taken it? They're not well. And the organisers refused to pay him. It was 150 francs prize money. They said, nah, you cheated. Is that it's good not coin? your race. It's not bad coin at the time. So the crowd raises 300 francs for him because <laughs> they just were so impressed by what he'd just done. Fantastic. So it's his first ever professional race and he's already cheated. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Tour de France <laughs> is born. Yeah, so he's all, and this is a lifelong pattern. He yeah. loves cycling and racing professionally, and he loves cheating. He's a cheat. He's oh, he loves it. So he's hooked, and so suddenly he starts racing all over France. This is before the Tour of France. He starts racing. Is he and all given up chimney ones. sweeping now? No, is no. He, he, well, so he's he not has given up. He's, profe- he's become a professional cyclist now. After mm. that first race, that they seize talent, he becomes a professional. But his nickname is Le Pit Ramoneur, which is the little chimney sweep. That is his <laughs> actual. His, right. Yeah, that's what his I name is. The little this chimney story. Sweep. Now, despite you know, the so only scene of the movie is him. You just hear the inside a chimney is scuffling. <laughs> you pop his head pops up. <laughs> he pops He's covered up. in <laughs> little chip. The, oh, the little geez. chimney sweep. Little chimney sweep. So, and he, he that becomes his much loved. Monkey yeah, like like he's known, is, is the little <laughs> the little chimney, chimney sweep. sweep. <laughs> so <laughs> he's known as yeah, Le Pete Ramon, the little chimney sweep, and he's endeared himself to the crowds, and he's got this. So icon- he's a crowd favourite straight off the bat. Pretty early on because he's young, but also has this iconic image. And if you search his name, you'll see all these photos online. It's him like riding a bike a, in a race. Mm. With a lit cigarette dangling from the corner of his mouth, oh my because God. and it was and this photo became famous. It was splashed across all the newspapers. 
in France because he was winning all these races and smoking while riding back then. That's so French. The so French, French, French smoke everywhere, yeah. even on a bike. I know, but back then smoking. Le Jetan. Was he yeah. smoking a Jetan? Well, you know it, it was not seen as strange at the time. Like th- They all smoked because they believed, all the cyclists smoked because they believed that it opened the lungs. Oh, my God. So often before the gruel, <laughs> most gruelling part of any race, oh if there was a hill, if there was like no sort of tour race, but there was a hill ring, they would all pull over. And all start smoking a few ciggies, <laughs> believing it would help them before they ride. The support vehicle comes past and hands them a. S- yeah, no, and, they and all if it's really you steep. know they had the water bottle down below yeah, there. It used to be a cart and a cigarette, an so, ashtray. Yeah, so he was also famous. When they get into the mountains, they pull out a cigar. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I'm, this is much better. So he, so he would, but he would ride while he had the cigarette. He would smoke while on riding. his bike. Well, yeah, while, well, while in a race. <laughs> Um, as well as smoking, but when, while, when you spend most of your time inside chimneys, a cigarette's what's that? It's, it's a like being smoke. home. It's like it's being home. Reminds you, of, it's like being at the office. <laughs> as well as Jesus, this as is well good. as these famous images of him smoking, and he's winning every race. It's before the Tour de France launch, this is how he becomes the big star. He's riding every prof, like professional race in France. He, he wins all of them. He's yeah. so good. And as well as he's known for this famous image of him smoking, he's known as the little chimney sweep. <laughs> he's also famous for what he eats to get ready for races oh, and while he's racing. Hot which dog? Is, no. What, what is it? He ate oysters <laughs> and consumed several <laughs> litres of tapioca, washing it all down with hot chocolate and red wine. <laughs> It's <laughs> a breakfast of champions. Red wine again. Yeah, they, oh, the, they all drank lots of red wine in the early days. So this of is racing. true. Up until recently, I don't know if it's still true, but mm. on a long haul flight, pilots and co pilots on an Air France flight are allowed to have two glasses of red on a long haul flight. Oh, really? How French is that? That is very good. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Well, alcohol was compulsory in races of this day. Like, not compulsory, like had to, but none of the riders <laughs> didn't drink. It was how you made your muscles less sore. And none of them would have. If Is Brent, he eating before the race or and during? during because they the burnt race. so much. And we might get this into the, when we do our episode on doping in the Tour de France. You, you, mm. you work out how much these cyclists consume in like food, the calories they need to keep going. Yeah. It's like th- through the roof, right? Through the roof. So he, he yeah. would eat all this. But I just love oysters and tapio. Okay, oysters, wow. the weirdest, and they would all be drunk, and then so he'd be having <laughs> oysters, wine, and cigarettes, which is you know the path as uh, everyone knows to being the top cyclist the, of the, the day. Best in your field, but on top of this, he's also ruthless. So there's a journalist and author, Peter Cossens, who's written um, some books on the Tour de France, yep. and he said Lance Armstrong was just a modern day Maurice Guerin. That's what Maurice Grimm was like. He intimidated everybody. He wanted everybody to do things in the way that he saw fit. He wasn't subtle about it either. He was doing what he, about what he was doing at all. So in 1903, Grimm is at the peak How many of testicles did he have? <laughs> eight. <laughs> <laughs> he had a special seat. <laughs> <laughs> in 1903, Garin's so Garin's like Maurice Garin is like the peak of cycling. He's the best rider, yep. most famous. He's got the cigarettes going. He's got the oysters right. going. Every French kid I knows who it. he is, and so he signs onto the tour, and everyone is like following this tour and going, "This is amazing." So 60 cyclists leave Paris on 1st of July 1903, kicking off the first tour. Yeah. And almost immediately, the race is beset by controversy. <laughs> so uh, Hippolyte uh, Acutria, one of the favourites, had to stop in the opening stage due to stomach cramps. So we're, we're not even through the first stage, wasters. right? <laughs> <laughs> the cause of the cramps were revealed to be a spiked bottle of lemonade that had been handed to him by a spectator. <laughs> Oh, so wow. So he's been poisoned. So we're not even the, – the Tour de France is in its first stage. We're not even through the first day and one of the riders has been poisoned by it. Can, can I put it to you that if you're accepting drinks from someone in the crowd, yeah. you probably get what you deserve? Well, Is they that- all did because – you weren't allowed to like. There was no support vehicle. Or there's no support vehicles, and the tour didn't provide food or anything or drink. So it was common for the public to give you it, like on all these races. But of course, the Tour de France straight away. The tour in France, it's stomach cramps. Yeah, you got it, stomach cramps. Then it was found out someone admitted that they poisoned him with lemonade and they tested it. So you got to remember that. The Tour de France goes to every part of France and provide, you know it's quite provincial and yes. like they, they support their own riders and so. The passion that because this tour isn't just in one region, yep. it's riders from everywhere in France and it goes all around France. And this is the same to this day. The passion it brings out, the state versus state almost nature yeah, gotcha. of it is like 
it, it's a heightened to a level that they'd never seen before. And this tour just shows you. So straight away, yeah. we haven't got through the first one. Then the other cheating had been arranged even before the race begun. So we've had the, someone being poisoned before, but other cheating. Yeah. So you're not allowed to have teams in the first Tour de France. Now we right. are used to teams. And, and the and tactics associated with teams. Yeah, and, riding in the slipstream, yeah. pe- the peloton. Sure. Take, three riders will take the lead and do all the – take and make because when, when you're in the um, aerodynamic, it's the, you get a drag reduction. If you're riding behind someone, yeah. it's between 27 and 50% less – Air drag on you. You're more aerodynamic, so but you might get smoke in your face. You might, you <laughs> might get, and the guy in front of you has been eating a lot of oysters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All so, right. Yeah. So you Jeez. don't want to be too close. Crikey. No, but so that's the whole thing. You look, but you ride in their slipstream. This makes a huge, it's like up to fifty percent reduction in wind reduction. Yeah. So okay. That's why the person in front gets tired and they swap around, right? Um, and the usually who is their best chance is always at the back so getting the easy ride. I don't get that, but so because there's so that's no teams illegal. here, it's illegal. He, they, not just no, t- no one's formed the team. It's they say it's illegal. It's going to be a test. It's of, illegal to, what, slip to be in a t- yeah, and to be in a team to have any coordination. So you can't collude. You, can, you, you can, can't go. You can't go. Hey, let's take turns at the front. The idea is each as individuals, there'll be the peloton and people will move around stuff. But the idea is you can't have four or five of you all working collectively together, together right? Yeah. So. That that's the original thing, though, that because usually what happens is the, a star like Garin, he if he's allowed a team, his teammates sacrifice their energy to let him, him win, conserve yeah, sure. it, and then he goes the sprint at the end. That's yeah. what happens today, a lot. So, but um, Henri Derange is the head of the La Auto. He says no, it's going to be a test of individual strength. That's what we want. No teams. So in fact, teams aren't legal to nineteen thirty. But Garin straight away in the very first one goes, well, I'm not doing that. So he creates a team called La France. Doesn't say it is a team. So but he just straight away quietly goes, right, you five, you, you're my you teammates. And, and they all go, great, no worries. Right? Okay. So they all join it. So they don't acknowledge it, but they all decide we're going to protect and yeah. help each other and do the lead. That's the idea. So the race is going along. And in the fifth stage, four members of La France They've broken away from the field and Garin is leading the race at this stage, yep. but, you know, they're all helping him. And he told the group that uh, he said, "I'm going. all right, let's keep going, but I'm going to win this stage. And one of the group, uh, Ferdinand Agru, he argues, well, I think I can win it. Why should I let you win? You know, and this is one of Garin's put him together as a teammate, but there are no teams. So the guys suddenly realise, well, hang on, I... I'm What's feeling good. With? I reckon I can beat you in this. Why don't I just do that? Please. Garin's furious, yeah, right? Because he he's set this up so for him. So and he, and he expects complete loyalty from his team, right? <laughs> so he orders another member of his team to knock a Gru <laughs> off his bike. And this guy does. He just pushes him off his bike while they're riding. This is and he incredible. goes down. And they keep riding. Wow. A Gru gets up, gets back on his bike, and he starts coming back after them. And Garin looks back and sees him coming and says to another teammate, right, now you knock you, him you off. give him a go. So they knock him off. <laughs> and this time this guy, he hits the d- deck hard, bikes there. Garin gets, stops, gets off his bike, walks over to the guy's bike that's lying on the ground and jumps up and down <laughs> on the wheels until they're completely bent. Like completely cannot be ridden ever again. Oh, wow. And he does this in front of a whole bunch of spectators. That's so sport. Just, this That's is the first Tour de France, right? Um, so uh, the, the it's completely unusable. It's not it's the, it's not subtle. Everyone sees it. He's obliterated a Gru's bike. Can't be used. One of the spectators is so appalled. He hands his own bike to a Gru and goes, "Use my bike." Oh no, he's back. He's back. Back in the race. Um, and he starts catching up again. And but this time he's catching up on Garin again. But this time both because this isn't a professional bike, both the tires blew out. And he's left behind. So Le France, power ahead, and Garin wins the Tour de France. The whole tour, the stage, the whole, the whole the thing. stage, and he's won the whole Tour de France now. Was it a popular win? Massively popular because yeah. he's the he's star. the star. Agru, uh, Agru, though, he's not about to let this just, like this injustice stand. Right, <laughs> so he goes to the organisers and goes. I got witnesses. Here's all these. This guy lent me his bike. These guys all saw he trampled my bike. Knocked me off my bike. Yep. Here's the bike. It's ruined. You know. I've got witnesses. I got everyone. By the way, he formed a team. He did formed, he, yeah. Did he yeah. Say we that? were part of a team because he, he just throws everyone under the bus. Organizers listen to it and go, "We don't want to know about this. <laughs> this has been a massive success. <laughs> Garin is the biggest star in the world, and he's won it. Wow. We don't want to know about it. And it's a marketing exercise. It's about boosting the circulation of La Auto, not." 
Correct. A sporting Job done. competition, really. Yeah. It's a marketing number one. Secondly, okay. sporting. And so he's a chimney sweep. Yeah, so they completely ignore it. They just go, whatever. Whatever. And just. <laughs> That's a pattern of behavior that this went, what I'm went on from for the, some this is time, what I'm wasn't saying. it? From the first one, the first winner of the Tour de France. Do they have a yellow jacket at this stage? Or is no, that, or is no, that's, but, that's a later but he, invention. Yeah, it's later. But so he's, they've in their mind they've got they've run this big marketing exercise. It's been a big risk, cost them a lot. It's boosted their circulation so, massively. Have they taken over from? Well, we'll get the, into that. The, the so Garin has won the biggest star. So they've had yeah. they've run this highly successful race. The biggest star has won. This guy saying, "Yeah, but he cheated." They don't want to know, and no. they just go. Where they never mention it because they're the newspaper too, so they just yeah. don't report it. It just never, <laughs> and they don't reverse it. And, they, and Garin's the winner. So the very first well, win, they have a, 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 a winner who violently cheats and is covered up by the organisers. Mired in controversy yeah, from, from the beginning, dot. from the day one. And they decide, well, the end's justified because the circulation of La Auto increased more than sixfold during the race. Unbelievable. And by 1905, their competitor, Livello, who they were behind massively, out of business. Doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Job done. It works perfectly well. Fantastic. So that's the first Tour de France. Wonderful. The second Tour de France is worse. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the first one look relatively. So did, were they always planned to do it, or was yeah, well, it one off and they go? What, well, it's such we're a on success. It's such a success, and the next one's just only more popular. Same route, or because they do, you know, move no, it around a bit. Change a little bit, but pretty similar. Still no uh, mountains or anything. But this is where France really, you know, they've loved the first one. This is where the French truly just passionately get behind right. cycling it's and the Tour now. de France. The Tour de France is huge, right? But it's such a. This is, I would argue, almost the most disastrous tour ever run, and it almost kills it. 1904. 1904. So <laughs> it's an absolute beauty. You're going to love it. The second Tour de France, it kicks off on the 2nd of July, 1904, and it's pretty much the exact same route. They don't really tinker with the success because yep. it's such a success. And Garin's back, interest has skyrocketed, and spectators this time line the course like you see yeah, now. like we see now. Like you see now. This is the first year <laughs> that is everywhere. Like you just can't, you know. And the passion is huge, but it and so it becomes everyone wants to win it. Is the other guy league. back? They're, they're all back. The guy got knocked yeah, off. Yeah, they're all back. Trampled. They're all pretty much the same people. Shouldn't cheating gets underway <laughs> immediately, <laughs> and you're going to love this cheating because so the like, cheating starts. This straight is off cheating the bat. so in your wheelhouse. Yeah, great. You will love it. So the first one is before the race started, riders put itching powder in other cyclist shorts. <laughs> What are they? Eight? <laughs> yeah, this is before. Twelve. This is before the race has started. That's they're hilarious. Putting, they're putting it in, and others are just sabot- just straight out sabotaging their competitors' bikes. Yeah. So it, it's basically like the wild west. If you if you leave your bike alone, uh, unattended, get someone will deserve. sabotage it. So it's like, or the, if you leave your pants on, if you take your pants off, it's, <laughs> take it's, your it's, pants it's, off. You've you only got powder. yourself to blame. So, yeah, that's right. So that's the first one. Now. The stage itching kicks. Itching powder. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know there was a. I thought that was. A I know. Powder. Itching powder. It's like. Wow. The, so, the st- the stage kicks off straight away. All the right. Make you ride faster, I reckon. Oh, yeah, it could backfire. Oh, like you know. So you'd want to get on with it. The yeah. first stage kicks off, and riders just straight away try. I mean, they've already done the itching powder and the sabotaging bikes, but now the race is on. They all try different things. One quarter ride in a car for forty-five minutes. <laughs> Another rode in the slipstream of a car. Because you know that if you well, ride behind another bike, that helps. So but like riding a, behind a car, that's even better. I've seen, I've seen guys do it with there's a bus. There's no wind. Yeah, you get behind a bus. And yeah, off there's you go. no wind, and you can just go, and it just you just don't get as tired, right? So you, you're better. So uh, is there cars on the road? Yeah, well, there's well, support, they're not blocking there's, up. There's um, media cars, and they're officials, and there's um, just other cars around at times and stuff. So Jeez. they're all doing like it's all because you got to remember it's a huge. 400 kilometres each stage. Be a Citroën, there's, wouldn't it? Yes, a there's Citroen. all the Citroëns or a Peugeot. There's no Fiat. sense of... Um, Is that Italian? That's Italian. All right, but, uh, settle down. <laughs> but there's no <laughs> sense of... The, there's not enough officials to cover the 400 
pay so you stages. Can't keep your eye on them. They can't keep their eye the on their all. It's not like now gotcha. with this TV helicopter no, drone under a microscope. Yeah. You know, this is it's not possible. So um, a, a third guy, Ferdinand Payen, he's disqualified for being assisted by other riders. So he's like getting help from friends, like Garin yeah, did the year right. before. But this time they, because he's not the big star, they call him on it. I've got him. Uh, Hippolyto Cutria, uh, who's the one that uh, got poisoned with lemonade in the first one, <laughs> he's back. He gets caught he's cheating. Lesson. Yeah, he, well, he gets caught cheating this time. He ties a length of string to a car and attaches a cork to it, which he puts. <laughs> 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 Which he puts between his teeth. So he's got the cork between his teeth, tied to and a he's string, been dragged and along. he's been dragged along, um, avoiding dental damage. Apparently, <laughs> his one mistake. Was How long did he do <laughs> that for? His one mistake was the car drove too fast, and he arrived at the end of the stage almost at the same time as a bunch of race officials who'd done the whole bit on in a car. So they just. And, like, with, and with one of his front teeth out. <laughs> and they just went, hang on, <laughs> you left the same time as us and we're in a car and you're How arriving. long is the string? I, I think I, they, I try to find pictures of this. It's just because it's just newspaper reports and stuff like that. So I'd love to know. But There's he just a lot of pressure it. on your front molars when you're uphill. You know what I mean? What oh, you? It must be. I mean, How you there? And this, good. yeah, yeah. This one, I good, but just on the on the two yeah. front. But actually, with all the wine being drunk, finding a cork's not hard either. But just, I love the effort they go to. Like, um, he, he would sniff the cork first and go, "Oh, this is a <laughs> this very is, good this year." Is not right. <laughs> so, a new thing the riders in the that second is uh, you've blown my mind. Oh, isn't it? Like, it's just, like, just it's like a car- it's can't. like that cartoon wacky races. Like they're all <laughs> trying to outdo each other. Like it's. Yeah. So, so the new thing the riders had to deal with in this second tour that wasn't a thing in the first is hostile spectators. Okay. Because suddenly everyone's interested in it. They've seen the first one. They love it. They want. Why are they hostile? Well, they they love some. They they have their favourites who are oh, usually from said, their region. Regional. But if it's from stuff, some, yeah. if they're not your and some, the grand remember the tour's going through people's hometowns. So. The hometown well, wants their they, guy to win and not the others. How do they right? express their hostility? Oh, lots of ways. So, so Gurin becomes so concerned about the violence towards some riders <laughs> early on. He likes violence. He's orchestrated, yeah, yeah, right? He yeah, doesn't yeah. like it. I'd he likes it to. done to someone else, not to him. He actually says during the race, if I'm not murdered before we reach Paris, I'll win the Tour de France again. Okay. But he's like, you know, and he wasn't being exaggerated. So to give you an idea, of, it wasn't out of the question that someone would get murdered. First, Before the first stage ended, four masked men in a car, not a Fiat, probably. A, <laughs> they Central. attempted to run Garen and his main rival off the road. So they're just in like masked men just in a car and they managed to quickly get off, but it was a sign. So they tried to just run them over while they're on their bikes. What, what masks? What type of masks? Didn't, I think... I don't know. Should be dressed as mimes. <laughs> yeah, in France, it be mimes. Dressed as French mimes. It was a very quiet Four men in stripy run. t-shirts. <laughs> Later seen walking into the wind. <laughs> so they've so, so they someone's trying out. to run them over, and they only just saw the car coming and got off the road. That would be like the first dooring. Yeah, yeah, ever. that's right. It and, was like, and it's in the Tour de France. Yeah, it's beginning the long the, the, <laughs> the rivalry between motorists and cyclists. This you know. is where it was born. Now, then, as this is going on, so it's already set up that it, in this first stage that there's been spectators, you know, abusive, trying to run off the uh, run people off the road. All this stuff happening. There's the itching powder. There's the cork <laughs> with the, the string. This is just the first stage, right? First stage also becomes known that Garin has received food along the route. Which you're not supposed to get only at designated posts. In the, by the second tour, they've tried to put some organisation. You can get food yeah, and drink. because of the lemonade poisoning in the first one. They've said and a couple of bad the, oysters. Yeah, a couple of you can only <laughs> get. You can get food and cigarettes at these bits, right? And brandy and everything. So they, so that's so. You, and outside of that's illegal to take food. So Garin, of course, it turns out is getting food all on the route, um, and you're meant to be. Therefore, ba- he's meant to be banned. Wow. But the organisers can't punish him because they're the ones who gave him the food. <laughs> <laughs> because he cracked it and said, I'll drop out of the race if you don't feed me along the way and I'm wow. the biggest star. And you got to remember, it's the second year, it's been a success, but it's not he's what it really is now. He's really running so the show, he's, Yeah, he? he's running the show. So he says, give me food. And they were worried about losing the biggest star. So they relented and gave him food. So even though everyone complained, once again, they've com- it, they've said he's cheated again yeah. and well, they went, well, well, what are you going to do? So only one stage of the six stages of the 904 race has been done at this point. Wow. The next stage, the second stage of 904, this is the most dramatic <laughs> stage in the history of the Tour de France, I reckon. Oh, I'm so excited. So it's between Lyon and Saint-Étienne 
and a guy called Andre Fear was pushing ahead of the field and he enters his hometown along this yep. route. The townsfolk had obviously lined the roads to to cheer him on. So they watch him go through and he's leading and they go, how good is this? Our guy from our hometown's just yep. driven through and he's Perfect. leading the front. So they then decide, well, why don't we help him out? So as he passes, 200 of them then blockade the road. <laughs> they wouldn't let any other rider through. What? And so he's getting this lead while they're blocking the road. They then begin to attack the riders, not just blockade them, attack them. <laughs> and soon a riot breaks out with the townsfolk yelling, yelling, kill them as they rush the cyclists. <laughs> what is going on? So they start, it starts being full hand-to-hand combat. It's a riot. Yeah, but the townsfolk have got sticks and they're trying to literally kill yeah. Yeah. the Tour de France field just because their rider's gone ahead. <laughs> Gio Lefebvre, who's the guy who suggested to his boss we should have a Tour de France, yes. he's riding along, comes up to this and sees this barricade, full pitch battle. I'm talking yeah, like yeah. people get really hurt, right? It's we'll like, get into some of the like injuries. Like it's yeah, like storming yeah, a barricade. Yeah, he, he, absolutely. Like it's the French in all their revolutionary <laughs> glory, but it's for the – they are punching on as much wow. as you can imagine. All the, and the cyclists are literally fighting for their lives. So uh, Lefebvre pulls out a gun – <laughs> and fire starts firing shots in the air until the mob disperse. Oh my god! And they were, so the brawls are laughing matter. Garin sustained a hand injury and had to finish the stage using only one hand. Another Not rider his smoking hand. <laughs> I hope <laughs> that's why he that out of his lip. Um, <laughs> that's my oyster <laughs> hand. Another rider, Paul uh, Gerby, he's left unconscious on the side of the road with his fingers all broken as well, and he doesn't get to get up. He does. He lives, they but he broke his fingers. Broke his fingers and knocked him unconscious. So you got to and and then so then they have to clear the blockade because they've built a mini blockade across the road. I've often wanted very to do friend. that to cyclists. I have to say. Oh, I'd love so, that. I don't I think I don't think you've lived if you haven't man, <laughs> manned a blockade at some point in your life. Yeah. So the blockade has to be cleared though, so the riders can carry on. Um, so they finally clear this blockade. Meanwhile, <laughs> the other guy, who's um, who's uh, the town folk have done this all for. Uh, he's off yeah, Scott Free. He, Andre Fier. He's, he's, just, he's off he's, the races. He's off. Uh, yeah. He's literally off the races. Um, so the so they clear the blockade and they start off again. The rest of the field. How much time start. do you reckon they've lost? Oh, here? I reckon they lost like uh, they lost like half an hour plus. Like it was <laughs> like it's a full pitch battle. Like it's. It's called the bat in France. It's called the Battle of Saint Etienne. It's called a battle. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it and it's was in, a, r- in the middle of the Tour the, de France. If, the, if uh, Gio Lefebvre hadn't showed up and started shooting his gun to disperse Who knows the crowd, what would someone would have died. It's almost would be laying reefs there. <laughs> yeah. Once a year. Yeah, that's right. It's the the riders would like dump their fields. <laughs> so the second. So. Um, but so they get through the blockade and they continue on the rest of the field only to find another obstacle. The roadhead's covered in nails and broken glass. I was going to say, <laughs> when are they going to put the tax down so on they the- literally done that. So the whole field, they've let their guy go through and the whole field suddenly get punctures and delaying them even further because remember they've got to do their own repairs. Oh, my God. So the second stage finally finishes that night. The confusion's so great that at, contr- at the control post, so they have the thing called control, which is where yeah. you have to check in at the end, they forget to record the finishing times of the cyclists because <laughs> it's just so nuts and they've all just made it through this gauntlet and all the cyclists don't care either. So, but they know like, the positions. Roughly, but yeah, but they don't know. And everyone's just so glad everyone's alive like at this point, right? It's not <laughs> like it's total madness. The r- riders say the whole <laughs> stage should be voided. Well, I would have thought you'd call the race yeah, off at this co- point. So the organisers go, nah. <laughs> Now, play on. Play on, fine. Wow. So you'd think that after that that things would settle down, but then we get into the third stage and it's no better. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tour enters um, Nim near the hometown of a guy called Ferdinand Payan, who's the one who'd been disqualified earlier for getting help from teammates. Yeah. So it goes through his home um, town and they decide that they want it, they that want to demand that he be reinstated because he's from their hometown. Or none shall pass. His fans, they demand to be overturned and the race organisers say no. So they barricade the, the road again. <laughs> the locals take it. I'm so the, seeing pitchforks. I'm seeing flames. No, well, the result was that the crowd barricaded the road to stop the entire tour. So they don't let anyone go. They're like, well, if he's, if he's not reinstated, the tour's not no, happening. Yeah. And they begin pelting the riders with rocks. <laughs> Several are injured. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the second day in a row that <laughs> there's a barricade under. and they're coming under attack. What? They don't stop it. The organisers step in and brandish firearms again. 
to disperse the crowd. What is so going it's like on? The tr- the, each stage is now beginning with the traditional barricade and the brandishing of the arms. You need to be armed. Yeah. How badly do you want to win this race? Why don't all the riders just go, you know what? Yeah. I like cycling. Yeah, but, but this is not for that's me. That's enough. Yeah. Enough, guys. It, it seems what is amazing you're in all the rocks things at I've. Me. <laughs> yeah, you're chucking rock at me. This guy got knocked unconscious. Yeah, and, you've like, can you all imagine? My fingers. One of these things happens in the modern, in any Four modern guys sport. Four masks attack, tried to run me over in a car. Yeah. And they're all still going, I'm but, done but, here. But you know what's amazing about this is at no point does anyone seem to occur to them to stop the race. Like they no, pl- ask to avoid the stage, but they don't ask the race to stop. They just go, just avoid that stage. Just is keep this the why race. they move the race around eventually to avoid the areas that I don't know. I are think prone they spread it more barricades. around for tourism. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I actually miss the barricades. I think they should bring that these they back. Sh- should just for old times sake. Yeah, because everyone complains about that lady holding the sign. She's back around the white. shallow end of the pool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Um, so that's so the tradition of a barricade. This is madness. Oh, it's madness what you're describing right? is yeah, not yeah. a sporting event. No, no, it's a no. It's a true Hercules kind of rites of passage. So, kind right, of so the, the so the, the once again start another tour with a barricade and firing of warning shots. Then another. Hang on, no, but was was he reinstated? The guy? No, nah. no. They clear him off with they guns. Just clear him off. With guns. <laughs> Seriously, at gunpoint, they say we're not okay. reinstating him. We're going to shoot you if you don't move, and they they move. Yeah. Another emerging tradition is then observed when the riders encounter even more nails and broken glass yeah, all funny. over the road. Um, most of them have to continue on foot carrying their bikes. For I was going to say, them. that's the, what you do, isn't it? Yeah, because they all have to do to their own repairs. So it's like they all start going. So that's another day. So they most of them hadn't got had a chance to cheat in this stage because they're just avoiding angry mobs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. Like they all went, this is a bit hard. So that's the end of the third stage. And really at this point, the organisers and the riders are a bit like, we, we need a quick, quiet stage because this is getting like this is this is not really. Can we just get back to some old fashioned cheating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which, luckily, stage four gets underway and there's no angry mobs. They finally get a Thank day you. and a stage. Yeah. That, Who's winning, by the way? Garin at this time uses this quiet to increase his lead. His he lead. starts to go right. Yeah. We don't know exactly where this happened on the route, but in this part in stage four, he k- catches a train for part of the stage. <laughs> The fast train? Because you got to remember, the they can't cover the whole field. So he gets on a train. and the t- So it's so big and spread out, they can't survey all the stages. And this time um, that he gets on the cage. And he didn't admit he got this train until he was an old man. But then he admitted he but did there were rumours at the time. There were rumours at the time. And he's hardly alone. At least nine other riders jumped on the train and numerous others took shortcuts. So with the crowds not there and after everything happened, they all went... It's probably the safest place. Yeah. It's on so, the train. So a lack of crowd virus, a nice train journey. It sees the riders <laughs> somewhat refreshed for the fifth stage. Once again in the fifth stage, though, they're beset by nails on the roads and they yeah. have all these things. Um, outside assistance, assistance obviously isn't allowed, so they have to fix their own tyres, which wastes precious times. A young cyclist called Henri Cornet, he couldn't fix his tyres because the damage was so bad, so he rode the last 40 kilometres of the stage on two flat tyres. Unbelievable. Like just – and these are old bikes with, like, you know, heavy – been making no sound. You know, that and, yeah, sound. Yeah, that and flapping kind of. Yeah, and he rides 40 k's. So now Paris is in sight and it's come down a battle between a Cotrier, who's the lemonade poison guy or the cork <laughs> guy with the – he's known for two – he's known for two things. Or Garin. And who – and it was all who'd come uh, – uh, who was going to come and win the tour overall. Um Acourtre wins the final stage, but Garin, who comes second in the final stage, he wins the tour overall. He's overall. won two in a row. Um, he's back done it back. again. The little chimney, so he's done it again. Two tour victories <laughs> in a row. It's a huge publicity success for him. But this time, unlike the last time, the cheating can't be ignored. Can't be ignored. It's been too widespread. There's been too much going on. Everyone knew the whole race was a complete mess like getting in cars catching trains sabotaging other riders bikes the itching powder <laughs> the itching powder it, i forgot yeah, about yeah. the itching it had powder it all made it into the media it's like around the world in 80 days or something yeah yeah it's yeah. just it's it, it's it had all made it into the media so well, the me, so everyone knew so it's this fast was tour de france tour de france um there'd been riders working in teams there'd been physical altercations and threats between riders but and no one murdered. spectators no one murdered well, one guy knocked unconscious yeah and but no one murdered <laughs> right his fingers broken so it's just just a delightful mess it's like you, if you wrote this as a book people of fiction people would go correct that's not true almost immediately they set up an investigation because it's 
just such a mess and they get testimonies from dozens of competitors and witnesses of what happened. On By Ray- the way, I love sporting investigations. Oh, yeah, yeah. My favourite committee in the world is, is the is it the FIFA Integrity Committee or the, the FIFA? <laughs> oh, when FIFA are looking into something. Yeah, yeah. Wow, That's like, like the most pointless job in the history of time. <laughs> Um, Henri, FIFA Ethics Committee. Uh, Henri de Grange is like the head of this owns La Auto. He despairs at this tour. He thinks he thinks it's open. Um, that his marketing exercise that goes so well the first year is now dead in the water. And in La Auto, he actually writes, "The tour is finished. I am very afraid that the second edition will be the last. It will have been killed by its own success, driven out of control by blind passion, by violence, and filthy suspicions worthy only of ignorant and dishonourable men." <laughs> Four wow. months later after the race, the investor... Not happy, Jen. Not happy. Four months after the race, the investor committee announced that the top four finishers, including Garin, will all be disqualified. Okay. 29 other riders are also punished. And the reason for suspensions, a lot of these suspensions, even mm. for the top four, Garin and everything, everyone sort of knows about the train, he admits it later <laughs> in life, but at the time they don't publish the reasons. The, they the, just say they the are full suspended. catastrophe, yeah. And it's never released. And then the records that are kept secret of this investigation are lost during the war, World War Two. <laughs> so very convenient. So we, we'll never know. A bit of Swiss bank vault somewhere. Yeah, that's somewhere. right. Like we, be... They literally, like the where they've been kept gets destroyed by a bomb. Those in the documents, world. they're the most they're, valuable. They're the, amazing, that right? should be a quest, so, a sporting quest yeah. to find the official results yep. from the second uh, tour de France. So we'll never know the full extent. So what I'm telling you now is the stuff that's come down it's to come us down. and got reported at the time. But the investigation found all sorts of things and we never even got known. We get we, You can get some sense of the level of cheating. One, the stuff I've already told you, but you get some sense of the cheating by who was the eventual winner. And the eventual winner was Henri Cornet, the guy who'd f- driven for f- 40Ks on... With the cork in his mouth? No, the one with the flat tyres. <laughs> He's won. He's won, right? He's the younger. He's just shy of his 20th birthday when he won and he's still the youngest ever man to win the Tour de France. Now, Cornet himself had been given a warning during the race for getting a lift in a car during the race, <laughs> but that was deemed to be not serious enough cheating for him to be disqualified. Ah. So he gets to stay the winner. Bit of harmless fun. So when you think about the four riders in front of him that got disqualified what and could, the what did they do <laughs> if the guy who got in the car for part of the race is deemed, well, that's okay. I'm astonished. So he gets given it. So there you go. There's another. So that's two. The, the first two Tour de France. You've had one guy win it, Garin, who jumped on someone's bike. Yeah. You've had the second one <laughs> have win it, who got in a car for part of it. Yeah. So you haven't had an untainted winner, and we're already up to the uh, third tour. To just, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But yeah. do, does the third one go ahead, or does he cancel it? The third one goes ahead. It's. Not as bad, although they start off with there's something like 12 kilos of nails over the first stage <laughs> that get collected. <laughs> Cornet, uh, you know, is obviously the winner. Despite all this and what Henri Dirond wrote about the blind passion would end the tour, Yes, what they discover is that really the cheating, the passion, the craziness and everything just makes it more popular. Not less. It's actually the secret to the Tour de France. So when people now go, oh, this crazy. has destroyed the Tour de France. It's like when they tried to ban fighting at ice hockey. Yeah. It's, and people just stopped going. They went, all right, yeah. back so to it. Like. The cheating's all part of the it's – a, it's a feature rather than a critical weakness. It's a it's a key feature. It's still to this day. Still to this day. It's never gone away. And the passion is really blind. Like he said, it's blind passion. Well, it is blind. It's blind to the cheating. <laughs> it just has no interest in the cheating. Now, Garin himself never raced again after that race. That was his, after getting disqualified, that was his. Why? He decided to retire at this point. He'd won the Sweet first one. Chimneys. Technically won the second. Yeah, no, he retired to Lands and he bought a service station. And when he was a very old man, his mind started to go. He'd wander around the streets asking, where is the control? Where is the control? Referring to the checkpoints where these riders would sign in during the first two editions of this Herculean but flawed Tour de France. Wow. That, I, I'm quite exhausted. <laughs> I'm going to go and put some itching powder. Well, the in benefit is our next episode, underpants. we'll we'll continue on with the Tour de France, <laughs> but our next episode we'll, we'll, that we'll put out next, yes, which would help you not feel tired, is about doping. Doping. Which, is, which makes this look like <laughs> a Sunday bike ride. It's now more organised, isn't it? It's it's the next thing that happens and it is... Uh, and it gonna, is I want you to tell me why it's particular to this sport. Yeah. Why this is the ultimate 
when it comes to doping. Thank you for listening to Sports Bazaar with Tyce O'Reilly and Mick Malloy. Uh, we're on all the socials. Follow us there. If you'd like to leave a review on iTunes, it helps us out. And if you've got an idea for a story you'd like us to do or got some feedback, send a, an email to us. We're even on the electronic mail. It's info at sportsbazaar.com. Thank you for listening. Cheers.